This week, Kevin and Gina are discovering writing San Juan style. Hi, I'm Chad Booth, and we're taking you to Blandy for a history lesson on wheels. Then, the AYL crew is in search of fall colors on the trails that crisscross the mountains outside of Richfield, Utah. It is a stunning sight you won't want to miss. Finally, how do you honor the fallen of 9-11 on a hilltop in Moab? The Utah Off-Road Group has some ideas that will stir the patriotism in everyone. It's all headed your way right now at your leisure is next. Can't get there in a truck, but the Stedman's Yamaha Wolverine got us out here without any trouble. Welcome to At Your Leisure. I'm Kevin Mortensen. And I'm Gina Mortensen. And we are just south of Bluff, Utah, in the San Juan River Valley today. And it's just, this is spectacular. I've never ridden this trail. I don't think I ever have been in this exact area. It's beautiful and green. There's not a lot of green in the state right now because of the drought. But this is a nice place to spend a fall day. You're right. There are wildflowers out. It's early September. The grass is still green and the contrast with all the red. This is really cool and there's just not a lot of people out here. No, we are out here on a Saturday with amazing weather, no rain, no wind, and we've run into nobody, just a lot of dust. So, <laughs> which a lot is of dust. okay. Everywhere we go, there's dust. But look, the rocks must be great because our rock hounding daughters are back here finding the treasure trove of. Um, of rocks we're going to probably end up having to leave here <laughs> that's going to break their hearts but the, we're only a couple miles away from the river house ruins and that's where we're headed today and so we're going to upload the gps track of this ride so that you guys can go check it out too but we're going to make our way on down the trail and while you guys go learn a little bit about this we'll see you in a minute <music> Beautiful. It's just really pretty like the way that the light hits everything and you can see like the shadows and everything It's just beautiful Our kids, I mean you've seen our kids are just running around they like to just Climb up the rocks get in all the little holes and stuff. So it's it's just an adventure for them. Prepare to get dirty, bring lots of water. Yes. Uh, stick to the trails, just respect it. That's the cool thing about this area is I think the locals really respect and ha kind of have a reverence for it. And so it's still been able to be preserved because of that. Well, would you looky there, we've made it to the River House ruins and what a spectacular view as we ride on in. I am 100% convinced that late summer, early fall is the best time to come see this river valley. It's nice because you start out with a little bit of a chill, get to enjoy your hot cocoa, wear a hoodie, but by this time, you're stripping down. My girls were dressed for winter this morning because it was a, a chilly 67 degrees and the ice was starting to form. But you know, it's warmed up, it's in the 80s, it's, and there's wildflowers and the grass is green. It's really pretty out here. And you know what else I love? I love coming out and meeting new people. We have the Holden family with us here today. They have some wonderful, cute little kids and they're fun to play with. You guys have been an absolute blast to be out here with your little family, little kids running around. I, I just forget what it's like to have little tiny kids. And Pratt, you've been a, a, a really good time. But speaking of little kids, we were supposed to be out here riding with Josh Nielsen, who's a local guide from Blanding. But he texted me this week and, and gave us some unfortunate news. His daughter was hit by a car. It was a hit and run. She got her leg beat up pretty bad and got life lighted to Primary Children's where she's been undergoing surgeries. And so we wanna give a big AYL Nation get well soon to Oasis. And we will get you back out of here on the trail someday. So Josh, take care of your kid. We'll see you out on the trail, hopefully sooner than later. But speaking of trails, it's time to get on down this one. There's a lot to see. Yep, beautiful trail right now, so we should go enjoy it. Let's go enjoy it, and we're gonna send you guys off to this week's where to. Welcome to Richfield. This is one of the many towns in central Utah which offers direct access to the world-famous Paiute trail system. 
If you head west along trail number four, which climbs straight out of town and into the Fish Lake National Forest, it will join up with the 275 mile long main loop of the Bayou Trail. Perfect route for a family outing. Today we are having a little ride with our family that has come up from Hurricane. Some of our family members are here, so we're just enjoying the day with them and a beautiful day it is. This is a beautiful part of Utah. You've got uh, different extremes. You know, we started out down low in Richfield. We come up through the sandstone rocks and uh, moved into the cedars. And then now we're up into the Quakies. So you can just get anything you want right around here that you don't realize from our little town of Richfield. The trail is welcoming to any type of machine, but there's something to be said for the side-by-side. -side. We used to have four-wheelers and it was, it was super fun but I really enjoy the side-by-side -side too. I, I enjoy sitting right next to my husband and being able to talk and laugh and point out the flowers and, and the scenery and stuff. So I don't know, it just feels really fun. When we had four wheelers, even if we were riding together, we couldn't really talk because she'd be behind me or she'd be on a bike behind me. We didn't have that communication or that connection where the side-by-side -side were continually talking the whole time. So it's an enjoyable ride for both of us. The trail passes around Joseph Peak to the site of the Old Rockwood Forest Guard Station, which makes a great place to have lunch. This is one of my favorite trails that, uh, that uh, my brother and I actually helped guide on the ATV Jamboree. And this is one of my favorite trails right now. The leaves are turning. Um, they're gonna be really beautiful come time for the Jamboree. It's gonna be a nice trail. The leaves are starting to change. I saw a little bit of reds and some yellows and it's been really exciting. The Jamboree is a pretty good event for the little town of Richfield. It brings in about, oh, 700 people. They ascend on the city park and uh, meet there every day before they take off on their different trails. They choose the trails they want to ride on uh, off a description. Then, then hopefully they go out and enjoy a, a ride that they're capable of, of doing. Even if you don't make it to the Jamboree, the town of Richfield is one of many welcoming towns along the Paiute Trail system that has the door open and the welcome mat out all year long. There's just a great atmosphere here. You can walk into a restaurant, everybody's friendly and they say hi. So there's that hometown feeling that I just don't get anywhere else. But you can come out and enjoy nature. There's things so close but yet we have all the conveniences of, you know, kind of having a city too. Honestly, the people are just more friendly here and it's just the scenery is beautiful. It's, it's much greener than where we're at. I mean, obviously we live in a desert. I think the best way to keep the trails open is to come out and use them, to be honest with you. You got to use them, keep them open, keep them clean, pick up the trash if there is any. I mean, just enjoy the mountains and get in, buckle up, enjoy it. It's going to be a great time. With this week's Where To, I'm Chad Duke. You hear it? The sounds of the city. Don't you wish you could escape? Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We're going to show you how today in our What's new? I'm out here at Stedman's with Kirk Stedman, and they have just picked up the new Fantic line of uh, mountain bikes. Now, Kirk, you're a dirt biker, so yeah. you probably somewhere in the back of your mind have heard about Fantic as a, a great enduro Italian uh, motocross builder, right? Yeah, I've heard of their motorcycles before, never. But you never got to race one? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, let's just run down a couple of things on this. What I noticed right off is that it is a 10 speed. All 10 sprockets are on the back derailleur, so it leaves your handlebar space free for all of your electric functions. Yeah, and on this one, mm -hmm. so over here you got your lever which will adjust your seat height. I like that. While you're riding. It goes up, you use your own body weight to push it back down to wherever you want it. So uh, let's talk a little bit about how the suspension is set up. Okay, so they've got Rock Shocks, and, and that is a name that I guess is fairly well known, right? Yeah, well known in the uh, off-road mountain bike world. Right. There's a Schrader valve on the front and the back, so you can adjust the air pressure. Um, there's also a lockout uh -huh. on the shock, so you can lock it, unlock it, 
So how hard is the battery to change on this one? The battery is actually pretty easy to change. Mm -hmm. On this one, you just got a, a bolt right here. Uh -huh. Take the bolt out and the battery comes up and comes out. So uh, what I do notice and what I do like about it is with this back seat, it looks like it's set up for comfort. I'm anxious to get out and ride it so we can find out because it looks like it's got a good placement relationship to the pedals. So I think we should go ride this thing. Yeah, let's go try it out. Did I beat you? Just barely. <laughs> That's because I had power assist. You turned your boost up higher than me. It is all the way up on boost. I cheated. <laughs> hey, this has actually been pretty impressive. If people want to find out more, uh, if they've become a Fantic fanatic like I have, how do they do it? Check us out on our website at www.stedmans.net. Uh -huh. Come out to Twilla, 916 North Main. Come hop on the bike, ride it around. Get a feel for it yourself. They do have a they do have a couple of good rock piles right near the dealership, so you can get a feel. But I'd really want to go up in the canyon over there. I know you and I've got time, but they don't. Should we go? Yeah, let's go up the canyon. All right, stay with us. We'll be have a little bit more of at your leisure ahead of you, and we're gonna ride. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We've made it up into the River House ruins and it's not very hard to get up here. Easy peasy? Lemon squeezy. Lemon squeezy. Yeah, River House. There's a river and here's the house. house. That could describe almost every house in Utah though. House. This thing's lasted 1500 years like this. And so, you know, it's really spectacular as you're coming in on the trail. We came in, I think from the south, I think. And all of a sudden there's this spectacular ruin on the side of the cliff overlooking the San Juan River and this is really just a cool place to come but I want to point something out do you mind if I point something out here you know what these signs the BLM has graciously made this available that you can come and walk around these ruins and look inside of them but they have asked that there's places that you just please do not enter and you know want to know what's really disheartening is when I look inside here there are adult footprints climbing through this ruin that means people who know how to read we assume looked at these signs, please do not enter, and they completely disregarded it and they climbed inside. And folks, that's gonna make it so that people in the future aren't gonna be able to see this because they're gonna have no choice but to close this down. People are gonna come and push these rocks over and it's not gonna be here for future generations. So obey the signs, but there's a lot to see here. I hear there's some petroglyphs down there. I hear there's maybe some granaries and stuff. I think we should go check it out. Let's go check it out. I think there is a reverence for these places. So being able to respect that and teach, you know, if you're gonna come and you're gonna visit and you're gonna, and you know how someone else told you how to take care of it, teach it to your kids or your friends or whoever else you continue to, to tell it to. It's a great place to grow up. Lots of fun things to do. I like that there's a lot to do here outdoors and there's not a ton of people here. It's still kind of a, a hidden gem, I guess. It's funny because I think a lot of people outside <coughs> of the area think that um, we just want to tear everything up, and but that's total opposite. We, it's nice and pristine because we respect it and want to keep it that way.
All right, so I know there are literally thousands of you AYL fans that follow us around the state and you go do what we do. And so when you come out here and you're riding down and you, and you get to this spot on the trail, come check this out and take good care of it. Obey the signs and, and look around. But you know, I would hate to be the guy that accidentally pushed one of these walls over, although that'd be kind of hard. You think I'm gonna push this over? It's pretty solid. <laughs> if I built this, it'd have been gone 1,475 years ago. And they say these are 1,500 years old. <laughs> All I know is this is pretty solid. You'd have to do, you'd have to be pretty intentional if you were gonna destroy something. Yeah, who knows how thick these are, but these, these Native Americans knew exactly what they were doing. And I wanna give you a little bit of a, a, a tip. When you come in, you're exploring, remember these were all hand built. And so they packed all this mortar in by hand. And right here above Gina's head, there's a thumbprint. 1500 year old thumbprint, how about that? So look close, don't touch and enjoy it, but there's so much more to see out here. I keep touching things, am I in trouble? No, just wash your hands so no one sees. <laughs> okay, well we go explore these ruins and I wash my hands and stop touching things we're gonna send you to see this week's along the way. It's a beautiful day on the Poison Spider Trail in Moab, Utah. A group of friends, strangers, and trail riders old and young alike gather together to honor the lives of first responders and those who are no longer with us because of the tragedy of 9-11. So we're here for a 9-11 ride with the rally guides that we get to go out and hit the trails. We're replacing a flag um, that's pretty worn out so that we can um, honor our country today and get to just enjoy all that we have here in Moab. There's just a lot of different features to be able to climb and there's lots of different um, rock features that we get to see. I don't know, it's pretty, it's, it's one of my favorite trails. I come down here, I just did it last weekend. I'm riding with um, even more cool people this weekend. I just love getting to hang out with the group that we ride with. They are some of the coolest people that we get to hang out with and it's an honor to get to ride with them when we get to ride with them. Well, I think it's important to get more women out on the trails. A lot of the guys have a hard time getting their wives to buy in on this stuff. And I think it's important to show that girls can drive and they can do all the things that guys can do. I've learned to fix machines and learn a lot of things from the guys that I ride with and so it's pretty cool to get out there and show them up sometimes and it just it's a very good social community and we ride with a very respectful group and so it's really an enjoyable time to hang out with everyone that we do and we we go out all the time nothing stops us from going out. There's so many options it makes the trail so much fun. As the posse heads up to replace a tattered and worn flag with a beautiful brand new one it's impossible to miss the passion and love these people have in their hearts for their country. We hear stories and conversations today that otherwise wouldn't happen. And nothing is more heartwarming than seeing a group coming together for a good cause such as this. He's a, he's a. Well, up here today, we're here in remembrance of what happened on 9-11 and all the people we lost. And you know, it's, it's hard. I remember where I was the day, uh, the day it happened and I remember they, they called over silence. I remember leaving for work and uh, you couldn't believe it. The buildings had been hit. What? Almost close to 400 first responders go into the burning buildings to get people out. And we had thousands of citizens die as a result of that day and the terrorist actions. Nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I mean, honestly, my life has improved a hundredfold by, by buying a side-by-side -side and getting involved with this group. I always look forward to our rides. I've got a great group of brothers and sisters that support me and, and we've become friends and family. And I just love this group and I'd do anything they ever asked me to do to support them. In honor of our great nation and in thanks to all those who have given their lives and made the ultimate sacrifice for freedom and safety, we would like to say thank you. For this week's Along the Way, I'm Stephen Human. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We're here at the Edge of the Cedars State Park. It's a nice museum 
cool. Take all the dust off from the ride and come see what they found in the dirt down here. Yeah, it's air conditioned. So no visit to Blanding would be complete without a, a trip over here to this museum. It's $5 a person to get in and it's one of the most intensive collections of Native American artifacts that I've ever seen. I've been to a lot of museums. This is one of the best that, you know, especially in the state of Utah, you know, for sure. So make sure you get out here and see it. Um, I hear there's a pit house right out these doors. Should we go check it out, girls? Yeah. And I guess there's some old Indian ruins. We've been seeing a lot of those today. So while we make our way outside, we're going to send you guys off to check out next week's show. Next week, Rhea and I learn why the folks from Farron love their rural life so much as they give us a taste of history crossing a thousand years at some of the most remote places in the San Rafael. Then, if you're a critter stranded on a desert island, how do you get a drink? Reese Stein will answer that question as he tags along with state parks and DWR. Finally, on the 20th anniversary of September 11th, the Stedman family honors those who fell as we join their 11th annual Red, White and Road in support of our first responders. Bet you want to know who this week's contest winner was. Well, Brandon Gee sent us this picture on Facebook and we drew it from the pot. Congratulations, Brandon. It looks like you're going to win an outdoor stove from Camp Chef. Camp Chef offers the best way to get your cooking done in the outdoors. Visit CampChef.com for more information. And it looks like you're also going to win a bonus $100 gas and gift card from the folks at Eagle's Landing, which is the best place to fuel up on your next adventure. Be sure to call us on Monday at 801-947-8888 to claim your prizes. Back to you, Kevin and Gina. Well, next week's show looks great. You know, thanks for coming along with us to explore the uh, River House Ruins just south of Bluff and we want to thank Blanding City and Pratt and the Holdens for coming along. What a great day we've had. Unfortunately, we're out of time. There's just never enough time to get in everything we need to see. You know what? We saw a lot more than what you guys saw on TV today. So you need to get in your machine, get in your car and come down and explore Blanding and show them some love. They want you to come and see this, but remember, take care of it when you come. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We'll see you guys back here next week, same time, same place. And remember that there's adventure around every bend. You just have to get out there and create it yourself. At, At your, your leisure. leisure.